my lovely, lovely imps, we're talking about Biden again. And we're probably going to be talking about Biden a decent amount in the near future. And um, he deserves, he deserves it. After all, he's the president of the United States. And he's currently threatening with his own arrogance and foolishness to uh, basically hand the presidency to the former president, disastrous former president Donald Trump, who is also a convicted felon and who has also promised to completely undermine all semblance of democracy in the name of personal power. Um, so we're going to talk about Biden some more today. Uh, this stream was recorded on the 8th of July. The video will probably be up a couple of days from now. Um, but today, a number of things have happened. First off, the Biden admin released a letter uh, basically defending Biden's uh, current stat status uh, as president and as nominee for the Democratic Party. A nominee-elect. He hasn't formally been nominated yet. Uh, and the Biden team released uh, or participated in a press conference. And those are, those are the two things that we've gotten from the Biden team. Over this last weekend, uh, we had a number of Democratic Congress people come forward and support uh, begging Joe Biden to step down uh, because Joe Biden's numbers have not improved. He did an interview at the end of last week uh, with George Stephanopoulos. It did not go well. Uh, in fact, he looked uh, terrible. It was a pre-recorded interview, and he still came off at multiple points completely incoherent in an, in an absolutely inarguable way. Um, it was not good. Uh, in addition, uh, a number of other troubling events have occurred, and we're going to go through all of them. So first, the first thing I want us to look at is the letter that the Biden uh, team released today from Joe Biden uh, that describes the reasons why he believes that he um, should still basically be the nominee. So let's do this real quick. Here we are. <clears throat> Joseph R. Biden Jr., July 8th, 2024. Fellow Democrats, now that you have returned from the July 4th re recess, I want you to know that despite all the speculation in the press and elsewhere, I am firmly committed to staying in this race, to running this race to the end, and to beating Donald Trump. I have had extensive conversations with the leadership of the party, elected officials, rank and file members, and most importantly, Democratic voters over these past 10 days or so. I have heard the concerns that people have, their good faith fears and worries about what is at stake in this election. I am not blind to them. Believe me, I know better than anyone the responsibility and burden the nominee of our party carries. In the most, by the way, dangerous election of our lives. I carried it in 2020 when the fate of our nation was at stake. I also know that these concerns come from a place of real respect for my lifetime of public service and my record as president. And I have been moved by the expressions of affection for me from so many who have known me and well and supported me over the course of my public life. I have been grateful for the rock-solid, steadfast support from so many elected Democrats in Congress and all across the country, and taken great strength from the resolve and determination I've seen from so many voters and grassroots supporters, even in the hardest of weeks. I can respond to this all by saying clearly and unequivocally, I wouldn't be running again if I did not absolutely believe I was the best person to beat Donald Trump in 2024. Well, we obviously know that Joe Biden believes that. Like, he's a narcissist. We know this. We, this is not new either. Like, we've known that about, uh, about Biden for some time. He's incredibly, incredibly egotistical. You could argue that you need that someone is almost guaranteed to be egotistical if they're going to be the president of the United States. But Joe Biden is particularly so. He has a high opinion of himself. Not a, not a humble guy. The problem is everybody else. 
And if he was smart enough, he would recognize that even if he thinks he's the best guy for the job, if other people don't, he won't win. Anyway, we had a Democratic nomination process. Lie, by the way. Also, that's a new thing. Have you noticed that all of the... Uh, that news media is now uh, uh, like fully and regularly having to fact check Biden because Biden has started lying all the time in order to save face. Now, we already know that politicians lie all the time and we know that Joe Biden lies all the time, but he was never like a Trumpian style liar. And it's gotten to the point that he is now a Trumpian style liar who's having to be fact checked all the time. We all know that the nomination process was not democratic. They explicitly shut down numerous primaries. There were multiple states that didn't have a primary process at all. That was not a democratic nomination process. Not even a little bit. They didn't do a normal primary. They, they just were like, we're not doing it. There's no, you know, some people might be on the ballot in some states, but we're not doing debates. We're not doing anything like that. This was not a, even remotely a democratic nomination process. The voters have spoken clearly and decisively. Do you guys remember how much of a percentage in multiple states the uncommitted vote count was? It wasn't small, okay? It was a big chunk, especially in a swing state like Michigan. Anyway, I have nearly 3,900 delegates making me the presumptive nominee of our party by a wide margin. For now. This was a process open to anyone who wanted to run. Only three people chose to challenge me. One fared so badly that he left the primaries to run as an independent. Another attacked me for being too old and was soundly defeated. The voters of the Democratic Party have voted. They have chosen me to be the nominee of the party. Massive, uh, massive dictator vibes. Like the weakest dictator imaginable, but but telling people we had a democratic primary when you obviously didn't, and then the handful of candidates who were third party, who were like, you know, not third party, but they were, um, you know, really small indie candidates, uh, and then like mo using this to mock them as if they're even a threat to you. If they weren't a threat, why do you need to mock them in your official letter? Ridiculous. Anyway. Do we now just say this process didn't matter, that the voters don't have a say? They didn't, and it doesn't. I decline to do that. I feel a deep obligation to the faith and trust of the voters of the Democratic Party have placed in me to run this year. You can still resign. Don't force people. Don't force people to do something crazy. Just resign. Recognize your own party wants you to resign, that things have happened since then, and that you need to take that. But of course you won't. It was their decision to make, not the press, not the pundits, not the big donors, not any selected group of individuals, no matter how well intended. Trumpian, once again. Joe Trump. The voters and the voters alone decide the nominee of the Democratic Party. How can we stand for democracy in our nation if we ignore it in our good party, in our own party? Good question, Joe! Holy shit, good question! I cannot do that. I will not do that. I already did it, but I won't do it again when it's inconvenient for me. I have no doubt that I and we can and will beat Donald Trump. We have a historic record of success to run on. From creating over 15 million jobs, including 200,000 just last month, reaching historic lows on unemployment, to revitalizing American manufacturing with 800,000 jobs, to protecting and expanding affordable health care, to rebuilding America's roads, bridges, highways, ports, airports, water systems, to beating big pharma. You mean, oh, you mean beating Medicaid? and lowering the cost of prescription drugs, including $35 a month in insulin for seniors, to providing student debt relief for nearly 5 million Americans to a historic investment in combating climate change. No, just whatever. We'll get there. The, like half of what he said there is going to be undermined by the Chevron decision, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter at this point. We're not doing, if we don't, we don't do the fucking ding, fact check ding to Trump. We don't need to do a ding, fact check, ding on, on, on fucking Biden either. This is a bunch of misleading bullshit. More importantly, we have an economic vision to run on that soundly beats Trump and the MAGA Republicans. They are siding with the wealthy and the big corporations, and we are siding with the work working people of America. It wasn't an isolated moment for Trump to stand at Mar-a-Lago and tell the oil industry they should give him $1 billion and he will do whatever they want. 
That's whose side Trump and the MAGA Republicans are on. Trump and the MAGA Republicans want another $5 trillion in tax cuts for rich people so they can, so they can cut Social Security and Medicare. By the way, super ironic that he's trying to, like, crib from Bernie when he, we know by actual experience that that is not how Joe Biden is. Joe Biden is not Mr. Anti-Corporation, okay? Not even a little bit. We will never let that happen. It's trickle-down economics on steroids. We know the way to build the economy is from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. How do you have both, by the way? How do you have both middle out and bottom up? Isn't that fucking weird? Doesn't that just sound like super weak and nonsensical? This is what I'm talking about, about him trying to crib Bernie's bit, but being too weak to actually sell it. Nobody buys this from Joe when you have to be like, we know it's from the bottom and the middle upper class up. It's just like, what, dude? We are finally going to make the rich and big corporations pay their fair share of taxes in this country. Why didn't you do it before? The MAGA party is also still determined to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which could throw 45 million Americans off their coverage. So resign. So resign. If the stakes are that high, resign now. You're losing badly in the worst election ever. We will never let that happen either. Trump got rich denying rental housing to black people. We have a plan to build 2 million new housing units in America. They want to let Big Pharma charge as much as they want again. What do you think American seniors will think when they know Trump and the MAGA Republicans want to take away their $35 insulin, as well as the 2000 cap on out-of-pocket prescription costs? We, Dem we Democrats just got them. By the way, this sells really poorly. A bunch of jargon and little asterisks. You, you know... You know, if, this, if, if they were actually able to steal Bernie's bit, you know what Bernie would have said here? Bernie would have been like, we are going to fight tooth and nail for universal health care for everyone. No questions asked. You need health care, you get it. That's what we're fighting for. Joe Biden's like, well, you know, $35 insulin for seniors only over the age of 65, as well as a $2,000 cap on out-of-pocket prescription costs that are won by the Democrats. It just doesn't sell as well. Is it good? Sure, of course. Of course, $35 insulin for people above the age of 65 is good. But it doesn't sell well when you're trying to run for president and you're trying to use this to deflect from everything else. What do you think of the American families that are, or what do you think American families are going to think when they find out Trump and the MAGA Republicans want to hit them with a new 25, 2,000, oh my God, 2,500 national sales tax on all imported products they buy? How many American families are buying fucking international imported products? They could have a $2,500 sale. What, what, who are you talking to? Or is there just like, I don't know, like who does that? Like, are you ordering like a, a bejeweled globe from, uh, from some like Switzerland firm? Like, is that what the average American voter is worried about? Oh no, my bedazzled pizza shaped clock from an Austrian clock shop is going to have a 2,500 national sales tax on it, tax on it. My goodness. What are you fucking talking about, dude? Just completely out of touch. We are the ones lowering costs for families from healthcare to prescription drugs to student debt to housing. Anyway, sorry, I lost my place. We are the ones protecting social security and Medicare. Everything they're proposing raises costs for most Americans, except their tax cuts, which will go to the rich, okay? Then, su then step down. We are protecting the freedoms of Americans. Trump and the MAGA Republicans are taking them away. They have, are, they have already, for the first time in history, taken away a fundamental freedom from the American people by overturning Roe v. Wade. True, step down. They have decided politicians should take the most personal of decisions that should be made by women and their doctors and those closest to them. True, step down. They have already said they, wouldn't, they won't stop there, and they're going after everything from contraception to IF, IVF the right to, and the right to marry who you love. And they have made it clear they will ban abortion nationwide. T correct. Step down. We will let none of that happen. I have made it clear that if Kamala and I are reelected and the nation elects a Democratic House and Senate, we will, ro we will make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. We are the ones who will bring the real Supreme Court reform. You, why didn't you do it? Where is the Supreme Court reform? 
Why didn't you do this before the Supreme Court passed one of the most horrifically difficult to deal with decisions? A completely uh, uh, undemocratic decision. Whatever. Donald Trump and his majority want more of the same from the court and the chance to add to the right-wing majority they built by subverting the norms and principles of the nomination and confirmation process. This is one of the most infuriating things about Democrats in the here and now. They acknowledge that the court is completely screwed and they have no answer for it. They kick the can down the road. Why are you not grappling with this now? Why are you not finding a way to play as dirty as possible and restrict the power of the court? Expand the court. Whatever you have to do to stop the court from running amok. They even called it the, the Biden... The Biden admin explicitly called it a rogue court, and yet they're not doing anything. If, if it was really, a, if you, and I believe it's also a rogue court, but if they believed it was truly a rogue court, why aren't they capturing the rogue court? What the fuck? We are standing up for American democracy. Okay, step down. After January 6th, Trump has proven that he is unfit to ever hold the office of president, and yet you are almost guaranteeing that he will. We can never allow him anywhere near that office again, and we never will. Oh, really? It seems like he's getting really, really close right now. In fact, it seems like he's got about one finger away from reclaiming the, de the, the, the office of the president. My fellow Democrats, we have the record, the vision, the fundamental commitment to America's freedoms and our democracy to win. The question of how to move forward has been well aired for over a week now, and it's time for it to end. Stop criticizing me and shut the fuck up. Isn't it? it it's a total self-report, by the way, that he has to publish a letter saying everyone is, is fine with me. That's why I need you to stop criticizing me. Isn't it a massive, a massive... Self-report? Don't you think that's a little bit... It gives the game away a little bit if you have to issue an, a letter telling people to stop criticizing you because everybody agrees with you so much. We have one job, and that's to beat Donald Trump. Then resign! We have 42 days to the Democratic Convention and 119 days to the general election. Any weakening of resolve or lack of clarity about the task ahead only, help Trump, only helps Trump and hurts us. That's convenient for you, Joe Biden. It's time to come together, move forward as a unified party, and defeat Donald, Donald Trump. Sincerely, Joe Biden. Infuriating. Actually infuriating. This is how, this is the Democratic Party. This is democracy. This is you being heard. Joe Biden looking you in the eyes and saying, oh, shut the fuck up, man. I, I deserve it. It's my turn again. He is quite literally, okay? It is quite literally him, ex exactly Jessica Metal. Jessica Metal says, Biden wants people to swear allegiance to him and not the country. That is quite literally what he is asking for here. When people have real doubts, when people are bringing him data that shows that at this same point, uh, during the last election, he was beating Donald Trump and now he's not, that things have changed, that he is struggling, when people have pointed out that he has now bombed two major public appearances and it's only going to get worse, we're going to continue in just a minute, but I want to bring something up. Something that we're going to hit is that on Thursday, Joe Biden is going to be giving a speech, an international speech at the NATO summit. There is a huge international diplomatic event that is going on on Thursday, and Joe Biden and his team have been saying, keep your eyes on it. Just see how well I do. The best thing that could happen right now, the absolute best thing that could happen would be for Joe Biden. And I mean this. I know this is going to make me sound and people are going to get mad at me for this. They're going to be like, no, don't wish it. Don't manifest it, demon mama. Because everybody who's on the Joe Biden train now believes in prayer all of a sudden. They're all, they're all of a sudden like horoscope reading, crystal clutching, God fearing uh, believers in, in faith and love. Uh, but, but straight up, okay, the best thing that could happen would be for Joe Biden to climb up on that stage and literally shit his pants. 
Literally, I'm talking big brown smear dragged across the NATO stage, uh, l l getting picked up by all the mics, the, the clumping, the dropping, the farting, all of it. That would be, I'm not joking with you, the absolute greatest thing that could happen at this particular junction. And you want to know why? Because there would be no question left in anyone's mind that they needed to replace Joe Biden. And because it would force the Democrats to then jump to action and put their asses into work. They would get rid of Biden immediately. And we would have energy for a new candidate. You watch. If something like that happens, okay, if it's a disastrous showing at the NATO thing, all of a sudden, every liberal and every Democrat in the entire United States is all of a sudden going to be sounding, it's going to be like they've been watching Demon Mama all along. They're going to be like, it's a, t it's completely ridiculous that the Democratic Party has not set up any all opportunity and now it's time to fix it. You're going to watch the, the colors change like that. It's going to be like, you know, those, uh, you know, those videos of the octopuses that can land on the sand and all of a sudden they change colors to look exactly like the sand. It's going to be like that in real time. Everyone's going to fucking camouflage to look exactly like they're watching a demon mama stream. Not even joking. By the way, if you like this fucking fire, Press subscribe and like down below. Anyway, let's continue. Hold on, wait. InQBBBBB in YouTube chat says, four months is way too close for a new candidate. No, it isn't. We have a candidate that would work perfectly fine. Kamala Harris. People already know Kamala Harris. She's a part of the current administration, so she can take all credit for the good things of the uh, of the... Uh, of the administration and she can d disavow the bad things she's she's significantly younger she has she has a personality she can have a public talk she can be on the campaign trail they a absolutely need if they don't i don't see how joe biden is going to win can you imagine if Joe Biden stays in and in september at night has to go on another debate and he does it again can you imagine if he continues to fuck up on his key issues? We'll get Trump. No questions asked. We will have a Trump presidency. They, it, may be, it might be scary to try and do a switch up four months before, but they don't really have an option. There's no option right now except for confronting the truth. The longer they wait, the less time they have. It, this is the mentality, by the way, of like, oh, it'll get better. You know? Like someone has a big wound on their leg that's got, that's dripping yellow, yellow goop. And they're going, ah, you know, it'll get better. I don't got to go to the doctor. Going to the doctor would be, uh, you know, it might be expensive. You know, it might be difficult. And then it starts to, it starts to look green. And they're like, nah, you know, we just, we can't. It's, it, if I go to the doctor, you know, I've already waited this long. It's probably my body fighting it off. You know, whatever. And then by the time that it's black and gangrenous, it's too fucking late. We got more though, okay? We got more. In case anybody isn't convinced of my position, okay? We got more. Two things. First of all, little shout out to a, a local politician. Here we go. Another Democrat uh, defected from Joe Biden today. Washington State Congressman Adam Smith, Democrat, by the way, Adam Smith. President Biden should end his candidacy for a second term as president and release his delegates to the D Democratic National Convention to enable the party to nominate a new candidate for president. This must happen as soon as possible to give the new ticket maximum amount of time to make its case to the American people. Any candidate for the highest office in our nation has a strong burden to bear. That candidate must be able to clearly, articulately, art articulately and strongly make his case, his or her case, his or her case, sneaking in the Kamala there, to the American people. It is clear that President Biden is no longer able to meet this burden. 
Donald Trump and Ma MAGA extremism pose an existential threat to our nation, and we need to be in the strongest possible position to win this election. If President Biden runs, I will back him 100% and without reservation. Elections are, after all, a choice. The president would still be, by a wide margin, the best candidate in the current field. He has done an outstanding job as president, and our country will always owe him an enormous debt of gratitude for the job he's done. But no candidate is owed another term in office based solely on past performance. Every new term must be earned with the clear understanding of what that candidate will be capable of doing in the long term. If the president continues his campaign, it would be a mistake. He should step aside now so we can find a new candidate that will put us in the strongest possible position to beat Donald Trump in November. Now, Adam Smith is not a, a far-left extremist, okay? He, he was, in these local elections, the party-preferred candidate, okay? He was the establishment candidate, as far as Democrats go. This is not some far-left, you know, Seattle radical, okay? And he's not the only one. As you know from my previous videos, we have been going through and reading off the people who have begun to defect from Biden. And they're right to do so. They will go down in history as having made the right call. All right, let's continue. We have more to go through, okay? Now, what I'm about to show you is an article that has caused some serious concern Okay, and the reason we're going to take a quick look at this article is because it is going to come up in a number of other things uh, that we're going to discuss here. So if this seems a little bit out of out of uh, out of pace, just understand it's going to become relevant. Parkinson's expert visited the White House eight times in eight months. The White House said President Biden had met with a neurologist only three times in more than three years in office and implied that doctor's visits were related to treating other people. So remember how I said that um, the news media is having to do fact checking all the time on Donald, on a, I almost, that's a, on Joe Biden? Here's the exact type of stuff that I'm talking about. An expert on Parkinson's disease from Walter Reed National Military Medical Center visited the White House eight times in eight months from last summer through this spring, including at least once for a meeting with Pre President Biden's physician, according to official visitor logs. The expert, Dr. Kevin Kennard, is a neurologist who specializes in movement disorders and recently published a paper on Parkinson's. The logs released by the White House document visits from July 2023 through March of this year. More recent visits, if there have been any, would not be released until later under the White House's voluntary disclosure policy. It was unclear whether Dr. Kennard was at the White House to consult specifically about the president or what was there for unrelated meetings. Dr. Kennard's LinkedIn page describes him as supporting the White House medical unit for more than 12 years. His biography on Doximity, a website for health professionals, lists him as a neurology consultant to the White House medical unit and the physician to the president from 2012 to 2022, which would include the administrations of Presidents Barack Obama and Donald J. Trump. Records from the Obama administration when Mr. Biden was vice president show that Dr. Kennard made at least 10 visits in 2012 plus a family tour, four in 2013, one in, in 2014, four in 2015, and eight in 2016. Mr. Trump rescinded Mr. Obama's voluntary White House visitors disclosure policy, so records are not available for, this, for his four years in office. Dr. Kennard did not respond to repeated requests for comment. In a statement released at 9 o'clock p.m. on Monday, Dr. Kevin Connor, the White House physician, confirmed that Dr. Kennard had seen Mr. Biden three times during three and a half years of his presidency, but did not directly say whether any of his other visits were related to consulting on the president's health. Instead, Dr. O'Connor implied that most of Dr. Kennard's visits were related to treating other people who work at the White House. Prior to the pandemic and following its end, he has held regular neurology clinics at the White House Medical Clinic in support of thousands of active duty members assigned in support of White House operations. Now, 
Is it possible that this is nothing? Yes. Is it possible that the guy who publicly and repeatedly lists himself as direct support for the presidential, not the White House, for the presidential medical unit, actually just goes there to give talks to employees uh, at the White House about Parkinson's. Yes, it is. It is technically possible. Absolutely is. But is it extremely, extremely weird that the White House is being ridiculously dodgy about this and also that they have now given multiple different answers with regard to Joe Biden's mental and physical health? Let's continue. Dr. Kennard met on January 7th with Dr. O'Connor as well as Dr. John Atwood, a cardiologist at Walter Reed and another person in the early evening in the White House residence clinic, the log showed. That meeting came a month before Mr. Biden underwent his most recent annual physical sh checkup at Walter we Reed on February 28th. In a six-page letter released after that checkup, Dr. Connor said the president's medical team had conducted an extremely detailed neurologic exam that had yielded no findings which would be consistent with Parkinson's stroke or other central neuro neurological disorders. Dr. Connor did not say whether the examination contained common tests for assessing cognitive decline or detecting signs of dementia that are often recommended for older adults. Now, you'll recall that when Joe Biden was asked about this in his recent interview, George Stephanopoulos... I say his name wrong. I'm so sorry. He asked Joe Biden directly, have you been tested? Have you undergone a cognitive test? And have you seen a neurologist about this? And Joe Biden said, I take, Jack, I take a, I take a cognitive test every single day, every single day, every single day. And then Stephanopoulos replied again, okay, but seriously, have you recently had a cognitive test? it would probably go a long way to quieting the fears of people who are worried that you're having cognitive issues. And he said, and he put his hands up and goes, I take a cognitive test every single day. I don't know what you want. I take a cognitive test every single day. That's the cognitive test. Probably the worst possible response imaginable. We all watched that the other day, live on this channel. The White House has said in recent days that there has been no reason to conduct further examination since February. No reason, huh? No reason? Questions about Mr. Biden's health and specifically about Parkinson's have proliferated since his disastrous debate performance against Mr. Trump on June 27th. In interviews with ABC News on Friday and MSNBC on Monday, Mr. Biden said he had the equivalent of a neurological exam every day because of the pressure of presidential duties. Hey there, they're quoting it. Look, look at that. They're saying it too. We're going to skip some of this because it's kind of treading the same ground. In his interview with ABC News on Friday, Mr. Biden declined to agree to an independent neurological and cognitive exam. I get a cognitive test every day, he said, meaning that the exceptional challenges of the presidency effectively tested him on a daily basis. Calling into Morning Joe on Monday, Mr. Biden insisted again that his confusion and halting performance of the debate were an aberration due in part to an infection or other minor ailment and were not a sign of a larger medical issue. If there was something that was wrong that night, it's not like it comes and that's one night and it goes away, he said. That's why I've been out. I've been testing myself, testing everywhere I go, going out and making the case. The night of that debate, I went out. I was out until 2 o'clock in the morning that very night. That very night, it drives me nuts, people talking about this. So, it is at this point that we are going to watch a section of the MSNBC press briefing from this morning. This morning being, of course, the 8th of July. And the reason I wanted to watch this is because I watched this, uh, I watched this, this press briefing this morning, okay? The first half of the press briefing is, and I mean it, like the first 40 minutes of the press briefing is every single reporter trying to get even a modicum of information a modicum of admittance that the debate performance was bad. And the press, the, the, the press secretary here, 
just completely dodges it over and over and over again and increasingly agitated, okay? And it reaches its head when they stop, when, the, when, when they say we are no longer going to talk about the debate and now we will take questions about Joe Biden's health, okay? And it gets really bad when they move into the health section and I wanna watch that with you so I can help you understand exactly the type of situation that we're in without all of the bullshit gaslighting and misleading bullshit and mantras and, and, and faith-based uh, uh, politics that you're getting from the Democrats right now. Mix Dizzy says, Demon Mama, I have a move movement disorder and my grandpa has Parkinson's. What's so frustrating about this is that such disorders directly impact your ability to do stuff. Stuff, and that leads to some systemically disabling realities we need to fix. But even my disability justice ass agrees there's jobs that I can't do. Me and my grandpa would not be fit to perform the job of president. Disability accommodations are meant to allow you aid needed to do your job, and Biden has all of that and is still incapable. I couldn't agree more. I, I think that what is happening here is a mixture of extreme malignant arrogance and also just a big drop of, of, of elder abuse. The, Joe Biden is being enabled at the moment. He is being enabled into harming himself. He is not healthy. He is not well. He is not enjoying himself clearly. And in fact, it's only going to make his decline faster the more stress that he's put under. Okay. Let's watch this bit here. Okay. Uh. Here we go. So this is the MSNBC... Pr uh, White House press briefing, okay? And this is just entering into the health section. Hi, Zeke. That's great. Uh, my first to you is on the credibility of this White House when it comes to talking about the president's health. Uh, yeah. When you were here uh, last Tuesday, you were asked if the president had, had any medical examinations um, yeah. since his physical in February or that included the time period after the debate. Yep. Um, you said flatly no. Yep. Uh, three days later, you admitted the president had. So remember just a couple of seconds ago where I said that the White House and Joe Biden have been giving ex oppositional answers to various simple questions being asked about his health and that it's giving, it's creating a atmosphere of mistrust. This is, this is another example of that. Where earlier this week, when the White House press officials were asked this question, they said he hasn't seen any doctors. And now they're like, actually he saw three. So why wouldn't people go, oh my God, they're actually not able to tell the truth and they won't tell us the truth. Let's continue. They put a short check-in with the yeah. medical team thereafter. I mean, those are, those are two very no, no, different no, no, answers. No, 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 no. Actually, actually if, you, if you were to listen to the, I think I did a 30-minute gaggle on Friday, 30 minutes with... Uh, 30-minute gaggle? Uh, I think it was an, uh, with, uh, with the pool. And, uh, and I said he did not have a medical. I, I cleared it up. You're right. You're correct. I said he didn't. I still stand, but he didn't have a medical exam. I said that in the gaggle, and you're right. I said that in the briefing. He had a check-in uh, with, uh, and he had. Bazinga. He said this on, on Friday. Uh, he had a check-in with his, um, uh, with his uh, medical doctor, which is something that he does a couple times a week, as you know, and I, I, say, I stated this as well. He has, uh, for, for those who don't know, uh, obviously outside of the briefing room, outside of the White House, many Americans don't actually understand this, so let's take a step back. They, they deal with their medical uh, issues or f uh, physicals very, very differently. They are very, you know, they are lucky if they get to see their, their doctor once or twice a year, right? They have to get in a car. They have to either uh, take public transportation in order to make that. We call this yapping, okay? This is a bunch of nothing. Nothing is actually being said here. This is squeezing for time. Happen. The president's medical unit is literally down on the other side of the colonnade. Uh, it's just down the steps from the residence. And so okay. a couple times a week, he does a check-in, a verbal check-in with his doctor while he's exercising. That is something that happens uh, often. Uh, matter of fact, he did a check-in today uh, because I know folks were going to ask about if he was tested for COVID. Uh, he was not. Uh, we are following CDC guidance. He was not tested uh, for COVID. They didn't, they're not testing the the Frickin' president for, for COVID? Why? Oh my God, we're so, we're <laughs> washed. 
We're washed. It's so it's see through so washed. Uh, just to let you guys know about that one, and if he has any symptoms, obviously uh, we would test him. Is that but the context of, of, of the second gentleman's diagnosis? Yes, or yes, which is why. No, no, no. This is it's in context of the second gentleman. But to answer your point, he did not have a medical exam. He did not have a physical. He did do like a verbal check-in with his doctor uh, a couple days after the debate, uh, and it was very quick. It was a couple of words that were spoken t to each other, and that's how uh, we were able to to to. Uh, we able to give you that answer, but he did not have a medical exam. He did so not have a physical. No, though, last Tuesday. Yeah. Was, uh, uh, did you know about that verbal check-in, or no. did we just not ask him that no. precise enough so, question? So, so the line of questions that I was getting. Did Did you not know about that, or did we just not ask a precise enough question? You can tell at this point, by the way. You should be able to tell by the tone in the press. The press is getting very annoyed. And that's because for the first 40 minutes, this entire conversation was waffling about the debate and telling people to their faces that they didn't see what they saw. Even the press is like en masse, and I mean all across the board, losing their patience with the Biden administration right now. It reminds me of Trump. This is how the press dealt with when, when Trump's guys would just lie. Uh, that day was in the way that I was hearing the question was about the medical exam. I answered MJ's question when she asked me medical exam uh, and I answered and say, I said no, physical. And then somebody else asked me, was there a check-in? I did not mean to steer anybody wrong. I was still thinking about the medical exam. I was still thinking about the physical. That's how I answered the question. And then when it became, uh, uh, when the president actually spoke to it, we actually, I went back, asked the, asked the, uh, asked the, uh, the medical doctor and he said they had a verbal check-in that's what he said but in answering the question i was talking about the medical exam i was talking about the physical and shoot a quick one. Um, there's been a lot of reporting the last 24 sure. hours about so you didn't know about it and you also didn't answer the question correctly and you also misrepresented the situation that was a really interesting response to this guy's very simple question uh, a parkinson's expert who's come to visit the white house uh uh, almost a dozen times over the last year or so, including at least one meeting with the president's uh, physician. Um, could you state like, very clearly, yes or no, was that uh, expert here to participate in anything surrounding the care of the president of the United States? So let me just say a couple of things. We have had uh, a comprehensive... Uh, so now you see why we read that article in between the first half and the second half of this section? And, and I just want to take another step back. Comprehensive... Uh, physical examination. The president has had that. We've given a comprehensive report. We've shared that the past three years. Every year that he has, uh, every year that he has had this uh, this exam, he sees a neurologist. Uh, and uh, just to give you a quote from that, uh, from the report most recently in February, an extremely detailed neurological exam was again reassuring in that there were no findings which would be consistent with any uh, cerebellar a cerebellar or other central neurological disorder such as a stroke, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, or ascending lateral sclerosis, and quote. Uh, so that came directly from in February uh, in that comprehensive uh, report that was provided by the president's doctor uh, to me that I share with all of you. So anyone who is watching can certainly uh, go to That's our website. The question, which was, this, was this expert's visit, was multiple visits to the White House so, pertaining at all to the president's well, care? Well, here's the thing. So the guy asked, a report came out saying that a Parkinson specialist was going to the president was going to the White House eight times in the last eight months after only appearing in this White House every once in a great while previous to that. Very direct question. Was this report, is, was the guy that was talked about in this report, was he seeing Joe Biden or was he not? And the lady said, in February, Joe Biden had a test and it said that he was good. It said that he was great. In fact, he's a very stable genius. The best, he scored the highest that you've ever seen. Scores higher than anybody could imagine. He aced it. And then the guy goes, okay, but a report came out saying that this guy visited eight times. We just want to know, was he visiting to treat the president or was he not visiting to treat the president? She completely and utterly dodged the question. It's Trump shit. This is Trump. I have I've said he's he has had three he has th had three uh, three physicals in those three physicals. 
Now she's talking about physicals? Again, completely dodging the question. So that's when he has seen a specialist, a, neurolo a neurological specialist. specialist. Because I have to be super mindful here, and this is why, and I'll, and I'll explain this to you in a second. There are thousands of military personnel who come onto this White House. Uh, many of them get the care from the White House medical unit, uh, and so need to be super careful. There are, uh, you know, the medical unit uh, hosts a ride. Now look, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to imply that they are lying about this. But for some reason, it seems very, very unlikely to me that in the last 12 years that this professional has been going there, that all of a sudden there has been such a significant increase in active duty military people with Parkinson's disease, who for some reason are also serving active duty in the White House while having Parkinson's disease, that, that this guy needs to be there every month for the last eight months. You know, that just stretches believability to me. In fact, it kind of seems like if it was, if an active duty person in the military who was in the incredibly important job of working in the White House protecting the president came down with Parkinson's, that they would most likely be put on medical leave. They wouldn't have them working, serving in the White House anymore. In fact, it seems like the only reason that a presidential medical unit person would need to go in there on a regular basis would be if it was somebody who would not be given medical leave. Now look, this is, I recognize that this is speculative, okay? It is speculative. I don't know. It is possible that this guy, they, that the Joe Biden administration just decided that they want this guy to come in every month and give a Parkinson's related speech to active duty people working in the uh, White House. That's possible. Why wouldn't they just say that though? Why wouldn't she just say he gives a speech every month? They would, it would literally destroy the story immediately. The story would be done instantly. Instead, she's doing the, 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 the bit from SpongeBob where, where uh, it's like, I want you to forget everything that you know that doesn't have to do with fine dining. And all the little SpongeBobs in SpongeBob's head start deleting everything that he knows. It's like, where's his name? Where's his name? We deleted his name! range of specialists from dermatologists to neurologists and so I cannot speak to every person because there are actually there's actually a security reasons to protect their privacy we respect and protecting uh, people's privacy so do not want to share uh, I'm not going to share people's names from here uh, but the president nobody's asking you to give out names if the guy's there giving a seminar just say he's giving a seminar. If he's there treating other people, just explicitly say he's there treating other people. Unless you would then be in risk of violating some sort of law by explicitly lying to the public in a way that would be verifiable. I can tell you has seen a neurologist three times as it's connected to the uh, to a physical that he gets every year that we provide to all of you. Know, that's a very basic direct question. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Now, I want you just to listen to that. This, this, this guy, that was, one guy was originally talking and her response has pissed off the entire press pool. So listen to that again. I'll just three times as it's connected to the uh, to a physical that he gets every year that we provide to all of you. That's a very basic direct question. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait a second. Eight times or at least once, in regards to I the just, president wait, specifically. Hold on a Not second. Not what you should be able to answer by this point. Wait, no, 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 no. No, wait a minute. Com Ed, please. A little respect here, please. So every year around the, f the president's physical examination, he sees a neurologist. That's three times, right? So I am telling you that he has seen or a neurologist three times while he has been in this presidency. That's what I... 
they are asking a question about a report that she acknowledged has the specific Parkinson specialist been at the White House eight times in eight months while working on the presidential medical team to see the president. And she goes, he saw a neurologist three times. And they go, okay, that's great. Did the Parkinson specialist go to the White House eight times in eight months to see the president? She goes, I don't know what you're missing here. She, he saw a neurologist three times. Deranged. Dera Mad King. Mad King era of American I'm politics. I am telling you that he has seen them three times. That is what I'm sharing with you, right? So every time he has a physical, he has had to see a neurologist. So that is answering that. Actually, again, this is like, this is like, uh, what was that guy's name? What was the press guy? Sean Sp Spicer, was that his name? The former press secretary? This is some S Sean Spicer energy. Remember, Sh remember back in the Trump days? Remember Sean Spicer? Same energy, literally question no it's not no it is it yes. is you're Dr. asking Kevin me Kennard, come I to the White House but i just and i also said to you condition. ed i also said to you for security reasons we cannot share names we cannot share names we have to we have to others he would have met with we but cannot, can share names no, 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 in regards no, no, no. to if we, someone came here no, in regards we to cannot the share we cannot share names of specialists broadly it, from a dermatologist to a neurologist we cannot share names. There are security reasons. We have to, we have to protect. Uh, I understand that. I un this is a load of bullshit. Again, this was disclosed information from the White House itself. It's disclosed. We know the guy was there. And they're not asking who he was, like, whether he was going to see a specific person. They're saying, was he there to treat the president? I hear He's you. right I, there for anyone to see. Ed, I hear you. I cannot from here confirm any of that because we have to keep their privacy. I think they would appreciate that too. We have oh, to give them... The doctor. We have to keep their privacy. It is public, it's public I, information. I, I, I hear you. I, 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 guys, guys, guys. Listen to... Now keep in mind, what the one guy asking the question is pissed and there are other r random members of the press getting angry at this. They are getting severely angry. Guys, the hold question. on a second. There's no reason to get back and go back and forth and well, be in this aggressive way. We are a around here about how information's been shared with the press corps. You... Oh, ho, ho. we're getting miffed how about how information is being shared. What are you missed about? Oh, what are you missed everything about? Everything he just asked about. And what do you? And then every time I come back and I answer the question and that you, you guys asked. Correctly, didn't have to come back and clean. I never answered answer. the question incorrectly. That is not true. I was asked about a medical exam. I was asked about a physical. That was in the line of question that I answered. And, and I, then you were asked about the specialist, and you have instead responded with a stock boilerplate answer. Mix Dizzy says, "Demon Mama." According to Military.com, degenerative and and herit. Herid, herido degenerative and heredo degenerative. Wow, that's a tough word. Degenerative and heredo degenerative disorders affecting the cerebrum, basal ganglia, cerebellum, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves or muscles. Parkinson's disease would fall under that category. Her claim does not pass the sniff test. These are these are disqualifiers that would lead to medical medical leave. Wow said no he did not have a medical exam and i still stand that by that matter of fact the president still stands by that he had a verbal check-in that is something that the president has a couple times right a back week. to the right back to the boilerplate a couple times a week now in regards to dr kevin Kennard. and i am telling you right now that i am not sharing confirming names from here it is a security reasons i am not going to do that ed it's been confirmed it's a matter of public record what you're doing is you're admitting and making yourself very visible to everyone in the world that you are actively dodging the question, which raises another question. Why? Why are you dodging this question in particular? In this particular manner, it almost seems like the answer is that yes, the Parkinson's disorder specialist is going to the White House to, to treat the president. Now it's possible that's not the case, but why the hell would she not just say that then? 
It doesn't matter how hard you push me. It doesn't matter how angry you get with me. I'm not going to confirm a name. It doesn't matter if it's even in the log. I am not going to do that from here. That is not something I am going to do. What I can share with you is that the president has seen a neurologist for three times. We know three times in the last year and he, he passed with flying colors. He aced his cognitive test. He's a very stable genius. For his physical, three times, three times. And it is in the reporting that we share a comprehensive reporting. Matter of, matter of fact, it's more than what the last guy shared, and it is in line with what George, George W. Bush did. It's in line with what Obama did. And so it is comprehensive, it is out there. I just read a quote from it. But I yeah, am not, I don't know if you I don't I know if you missed I don't know if you fucking missed the memo, but Joe but 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 o Obama and Bush weren't having uh, visible episodes of cognitive issues on na international television that it was threatening the election. So stupid. To devolve so somebody's stupid. name and, or confirm someone. I'm not going to do that. That is as is privacy for that person. I'm not gonna do that. It doesn't matter how hard you push me. It doesn't matter how angry you get with me from here. I'm just not gonna do that. It is inappropriate and it's not acceptable. So I'm not gonna do it. Not about the name. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Confirm the name. Can yeah. you confirm whether or not the president has seen this Parkinson's specialist? Um, and you mentioned yeah. three times, but the visitor logs show a duration of eight visits over eight months. I think that is the crux of the question. But I, but I also said, I also said there are thousands of military personnel. She can't answer the question and won't answer the question. That was completely anonymized, perfectly constructed question. Was a Parkinson specialist seeing the president eight times in eight months? Well, there are thousands of people in the White House, okay? Was the Parkinson specialist seeing the one of them that we're asking about right now? Well, there are thousands of people in the White House. The sky is blue. Clouds are puffy. My God. Oh, this is... Do you, do you now all understand why... I had to put this whole thing together. Just how bad the Biden admin looks right now. Just how terrible this is. Joe Biden has two disastrous public appearances. His press team is fucking fumbling. And he's about to go to NATO. Come to the White House and they are under the care of the medical unit. They are. So can you confirm that the Parkinson's I, I, visits, specialist I, visits were for the president I, or not? What I can tell you is that the president has seen a neurologist three times. Oh my God. And I read to you what the neurologist has said. And I read to you the last, the last line, I could say it again, uh, no findings which would be consistent with any cerebellar or other central neurolog neurological disorders such as stroke, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, or ascending lateral sclerosis. That in February. And that's if that's if this can be even trusted in the first place. That was in February. What about now? After he's had two horrific incoherent public appearances. That is from that is from February. That is coming from February. That is what the medical unit the the president's doctor shared. And I share I said to you it's Joe Biden reaching the level of trumpianism that they want to gaslight you about linear time. That was from February. Everyone knows it was from February. Things have changed since February. In February, Joe Biden didn't have an incoherent senior moment on international television while debating Donald Trump. Happened three times. Each time there is a physical that occurs and we put out a comprehensive report, that is when he has been able uh, to, see, uh, to see a specialist. So that's what I can share. Question on, on this. Um, has the president, you mentioned Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, all of these things. Um, one diagnosis that we have heard of potential diagnosis is hydrocephalus, which is fluid buildup in the brain. It's something we've never heard in any of the medical reports. Is that something that the president has it's, been about? Um, if, it's, if it's not in the medical report, obviously it's not, it, it's not something that the president uh, is dealing with. Uh, if, it has it, been oh, well, I can tell you this. Uh, just going back to Parkinson's for a, a little bit, so to give you some answers here, has the president been treated for Parkinson's? No. Is he being treated for Parkinson's? No, he's not. Is he taking medication? 
for Parkinson's? No. So those are the things that I can give you full blown answers on, but I'm not going to do, I'm not going to confirm a specialist, a, any specialist that comes to, come, to, comes well, to the White House out of privacy. The question is, uh, will the president go to the Hill today? I know we saw his letter. Um, uh, is he intending to have this conversation face to face with him? So look, the president, uh, obviously this is uh, uh, someone who is a senator for 36 years, who was the president of the Senate as when he was vice president for eight years. Uh, and he respects, truly respects the members of Congress and has always and will always do that, especially as a former senator. She avoided the original question and her answer was, is he being treated? Is he taking medication for these things? No, no. Um, I don't know. What about other things? What about other important things that might also be tied to it? I mean, I guess. I mean, finally, we got a direct answer. It is still extremely weird to be dodging the specific question. But at least we got something direct. And I will say, and you heard, you've heard us say this before, or most recently, is this is a president who's won. Uh, it's also weird. Why wouldn't you just lead with that? If that was the answer, why wouldn't you just lead with it? The primary, right? By 14 million votes. Let's hear, them, let's hear those ones again real quick. I want to hear them again days. just to see. Letter. Um, uh, is he intending to have this conversation face to face with him? So look, the president right. question a specialist, a, any medication, Parkinson's, no Parkinson's for living with. Uh, if, it, oh, well, I can tell you this, just going back to Parkinson's for a little bit, so to give you some answers here, has the president been treated for Parkinson's? No. Is he being treated for Parkinson's? No, he's not. Is he taking medication for Parkinson's? No. So those are... Has he been treated? Is he being treated? And is he taking medication? What that could also mean is that he's simply foregoing treatment. That doesn't mean he hasn't been evaluated. That doesn't mean that he hasn't been diagnosed. It just means he hasn't been treated. Which could arguably be even worse. I think it's, I think it's, now look, it's also possible that Parkinson's is the wrong tree. That that's not even the thing that's going on here. But it's really fucking weird the way that they've decided to go about this, and I feel that they've made a disaster for themselves, much like the previous uh, incidents that we've had where there doesn't need to be one. And it's clearly pissing off the media for really no reason. But it's, and even still in this, it's a dodge. It's weird they're focusing on Parkinson's so much. The reason that the Parkinson's has become a fixation is because of the report that came out from the New York Times. Now, the New York Times could be onto a nothing burger, but it seems to me that it would be very easy to just simply say, this is a nothing burger, but they're not, which is what I don't understand. And what a lot of people don't understand. Everyone's looking at this and watching this and going, what the hell are they doing? What the hell is the White House doing right now? If he doesn't have Parkinson's, he doesn't have Parkinson's. The reason that everybody's concerned about things like Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, etc., hydrocephalus, is because people are looking to figure out why the hell he shuts down in the middle of, of live performances, why he's incoherent. That's the real problem. And there are, there are these things popping up that are confusing, and the White House is not handling them with any grace whatsoever. It's weird the things that I can give you full blown answers on, but I'm not going to do, I'm not going to confirm a specialist, a, any specialist that comes to, come, to, comes well, to the White House out of privacy. The question is, uh, will the president go to the Hill today? I know we saw his letter. Um, uh, is he intending to have this conversation face to face with him? So look, the president, uh, obviously this is uh, uh, someone who is a senator for 36 years, who was the president of the Senate. Okay. So we have gotten through the portion of this that I wanted to watch. There's a lot of other discussion, um, but this is what I wanted to talk about, okay? Uh, it is the Biden team public response to everything that has happened has been nothing short of a disaster. There is one other portion of this interview 
that I want us to watch. And this one's a short clip, okay? This is from the earlier section. Uh, so I'm gonna play this part for you just so that you can understand why people are uh, feeling not so good about this and what I'm talking about additionally. Listen to this. After that, the president will hold a press conference. I guess a big boy press conference yes. is what we're calling it um, and take some questions from you all. Uh, now, uh, we're working to also set up some additional meetings. After that, the So, this is just one clip of it, but he referred to the big boy press conference multiple times. And I really don't know why they did that. I have no idea why they kept referring to a big boy press conference. But just so you know, when people are pointing out the fact that the president kind of seems like he's turning into a doddering toddler, saying that he's going to have a big boy press conference in the future is like just really bad. And people are pointing it out. And this is like the pettiest thing of all, but it is just a really bad look. It makes it worse. Baby talking the president when the concern is that the president needs to be baby talked and is not fit for duty anymore is pretty bad. All in all, I think that everything that we've talked about in this kind of long segment should illustrate that things are not going very well for Biden and that the Biden team is handling it absolutely disastrously. It's a shame. And Biden should step, step down. The sooner that he is willing to admit that he is struggling, the sooner that he and his team are willing to admit that this is a disaster, the sooner that they can move past that disaster and make the decision that's right for the United States. One that voters might actually look up to. At least some will. Anyway, that's all we have to talk about for right now. Obviously, uh, as the story develops throughout the week, I will likely talk about it more. Um, we're obviously going to have to see how he does uh, uh, on Thursday when he goes to the NATO summit. And we'll find out if uh, Joe Biden will be able to make it through a massive high pressure speech in front of the entire world. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. This has been Demon Mama. If you disagree with me, or if you agree with me, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you think I'm correct or incorrect about. I like to hear from you. Anyway, thanks for watching.